Hey everybody, it's Roman and Jill back with another episode of Hometown Conversations. So I don't know about you, but one thing that I love about summer is music festivals. When I first discovered music festivals, it was in the country space. Windstock, WeFest, and others were my starting point. So there's something about sitting outside and listening to music, I think. Um, we have our own hidden gem here in Hutchinson that we're going to talk about today. Um, it's called River Song Music Festival. Now, the first year I attended, sometime in the late 2000s, I was struck first by the music and then the atmosphere. There's something magical that occurs along the Crow River in Hutchinson during the middle of July. After a two-year hiatus, the festival is set to once again grace the shores of the Crow. And to tell us more about River Song, we welcome back Valerie McIntoon back to the podcast. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? I am doing really good. You guys are super busy right now, right? Yeah, Putting absolutely. Putting this whole thing together, yes. getting ready. Yes. Two years, super busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before, um, and before we get into all the questions that we put together for you and all that kind of stuff, um, was it painful being away for two years? Yes. I mean, it was the right decision yeah. to not hold the festival, but it didn't make it, you know, easy. It was right. a really hard decision. And I still remember sitting in, we were all on Zoom deciding to cancel the festival, knowing it's the best decision. And just, it was just a really depressing zoom to be on, to be honest, <laughs> yeah. and then Every, having to do it again. I mean, everybody the, that's a part of it seems so passionate about planning it and executing it. And so, yeah, it, I mean, it's never easy to cancel events, but just knowing who's on the committee, I bet. Yeah. It had yeah, been a hard. Absolutely. Decision. Yeah. So, um, I know about river song, but I, I we had somebody come into an ambassador meeting yesterday when we were meeting and oh, Jan, I, I, yes. I think there's just still this misunderstanding about what river song is. So we want to talk about that a little bit today. Yeah. We want to talk about how awesome it is because it is seriously one of my favorite events of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I've missed it for the last two years. Um, I, like I said, in the opener, I just, I miss sitting along the shore and listening to music. I mean, I still remember several years ago, one of the first ones that uh, was on, we had a group from Ireland, I think come in and I remember there's a thunderstorm behind the stage coming in. Oh, Romantica. And, yes. Oh, it was, it was really, <laughs> really cool. Yeah. And, you know, so there's this whole, like, atmosphere and feeling about um, just all of it. And then, you know, seeing sometimes you get a couple of pontoons that kind of float by and some kayakers that come by. It's just really cool. So let's, let's just start with um, right off the beginning. Now, like I said, Let's talk about River Song. I love River Song, but I think there's this misconception about r what River Song is, what type of music people can hear. So, in a broader sense, what is River Song? Well, we shifted our focus a few years back and decided to focus on Minnesota based artists primarily. And so that's really what River Song is. And just as you know, complex and diverse as our state is, so is River Song now. We cover a wide range of musical genres. I think a lot of music festivals, like you were just saying, there's definitely a country music festival. There's definitely what I went to in college, which were more folk based. Mm -hmm. It's neither of those, but it's right. all of those at the same time. You know, some of the artists, um, Faith Boblet, for example, is compared to like a gritty Minnesota Cheryl Crow, where then we have John Wayne and the Pain, who are the headliners for Friday night, and they have like this reggae, electronica, rock acoustic combination. So you really can't just pigeonhole them into one genre anymore. All of the artists you could fit into quite a few different areas. So I feel it's that. But in addition to that, it's family friendly. You know, I've seen this festival evolve over the years where, you know, I went in my 20s, I went for my bachelorette party, I bring my kids there now, and it's suitable for every stage of my life so far. And I, I hope someday to get to sit in one of those chairs kind of up in the front, like the people do that just really <laughs> enjoy the music. <laughs> we'll get you a chair with your name on the back ooh, of it. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I, like I think it. I think one of the things that I, when I talk to people about River Song around town, they get a little nervous about words like Americana because yeah. I don't think people, in general, those of us music people, we kind of get this stuff and yeah. you know, we hear it. And I remember thinking, um, you know, I was skeptical a little bit the first time I heard the word too. Um, I think the first poster I saw had a picture of a banjo on it. I think oh yeah, first that was year. our original branding. Yeah. So we got away from that. So I think people think about that and then they so they don't really know what it is. Um, so when it, when it comes to that, like, it's much more than just that. You mentioned a little bit about um, there being music for everybody. Yeah. I and, think. Like, and I feel like one of the things that stands out to me the most is the talent. Mm -hmm. 
these are very, very talented, polished performers. They are entertainers. You go there and one minute someone's telling you a story and you're completely captivated by their childhood and how they wrote this song. And the next one, like I always think of Dan Rodriguez, who's going to be there this year. He's Mm -hmm. talking about pop country and why he loves the fans (laughs) and singing, you know, I quit drinking for good. Now I'm drinking for bad. Like there's just all of them. But all of them, I feel like sometimes you'll go to shows and bands are great. There's a huge range of people, but these people know how to play their instruments. And when they jam out on their solos, it gives you those goosebumps yeah. that you can only get from that high level of entertainers and performers, which River Song has consecutively every year brought in to Hutchinson, which is amazing. You're sitting in Hutchinson and there's Janice Ian like on yeah. the stage. I mean, it's just right. incredible. The caliber of performers our talent team finds and brings in. Yeah. So you've already touched on this a little bit, but tell us about this year's performers. Who's going to be there? There's two stages. How does that work? Do you have to choose who you're listening to? Like, just kind of walk us through what the weekend looks like. Yeah. So Friday nights are shorter night. And so we're looking at four bands that evening. Um, We have the American Scarecrows, Michael Shines. Um, We're doing John Wayne and the Pain, who's the headliner, and Faith Boblet. So then Saturday goes over and we have the two stages. So we have what's called the Riverview stage and the front porch stage. So if you've been down to Masonic West River Park, there's the permanent structure that is the River Song stage. That's our that's, that's our main, main stage. And then we also have um, just for the weekend, the Riverview. So you can listen to a band and then they wrap up and then you basically can move back over and then go over to the other stage. So you can spend the day kind of walking back and forth. Mary Hudson gave me a tip yesterday that she has chairs set up at two locations. Yep. I have heard this advice as well. Yes. That most people bring two chairs, put it at each stage. Nobody bothers it. Nobody no. touches it. And then you've always got a place to land. Yeah. I was like, that's genius. I've never, never sat in a chair. I take that back. I sat one year in a chair, but I had had my appendix out the day before and they all made me sit down because I wasn't supposed to be there. But so then you look Wow, at- I can't believe they made you sit down the day after surgery, <laughs> Valerie. Go sit down. You're not supposed to be here. I'm like, I'm here. Come and like hold my wound. I wasn't going to miss it. Um, but no, you look at all of the different ones on Saturday. Like I'm particularly excited for Annie Mack. She came to Hutchinson um, and pre- performed this fall. We were given money through grants to be able to hold the festival. And that's one of the ways that we're able to, you know, um, support the festival. But we ended up redirecting that money during COVID and having performers come to Hutch. And so she just sits there and like tells you stories about Etta James and her mom smoking cigarettes and records and then sings in a gospel-y, just, oh, just like blows you away. I'm very excited for her. I'm excited for Dan Rodriguez to come back. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's performed here a few times. So I think Hutchinson, he's definitely got a following at Hutchinson, yep. um, just like Michael Shines. And I feel like they've played together before too. They're mm-hmm. like night and day. Um, <laughs> I'm really, really excited for Pertnir Sandstone to come back. So they were here um, one of our first years and they are definitely like high energy string band, kick off your shoes and twirl around. Um, so I'm just, really looking forward to that energy again. And I think that's the kind of music a lot of people think River Song is. Yeah, the blue, the more yeah, bluegrass right? feel. Yep. Which it's fantastic. But then you look at like, we have Church of Cash. So a tribute band to Johnny Cash, yep. which yep. my four-year-old son can hardly contain himself. Johnny Cash <laughs> is his favorite. And then we're closing out the night with Kiss the Tiger. So um, I recently put together a Spotify list just to get more familiar. It's so much more fun when you like know some of the songs and maybe you don't know all the performers or you'll go to the show and you're like, oh my gosh, I love that song. Then you buy the CD and you get to know them, but it's even better or record or whatever digital music. Yeah. Um, Beforehand to learn some of it. And I've been listening to Kiss the Tiger and their front woman is just she rocks like you listen to that music and it is going to be like rock and roll. We are going to be rocking down the river. Everybody that lives on the river is going to be able to hear that band. <laughs> nice. It's going to be fun. I'm yeah, really I, excited. I found the, uh, you sent me the, uh, the, the playlist yesterday. Yes. We, one of the things we'll do is we'll post that Spotify playlist oh. in the comments under awesome. this. So we'll make sure that we get that put out as well. So people can listen to that. Yeah. Um, I went through there just kind of page through. And I'm like, Oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. So you, you talked about who your favorite is. Um, I think uh, one of the things you mentioned, Dan Rodriguez and Michael Shines, I know there's other performers that have kind of been in this area before. Yep. I know those two in particular have a following in the Hutchinson yeah. area. So yep. And then good. Chester Bay too, they're coming yep. back this year. So every year we take a poll after the festival and everyone gets to vote on who their favorite was and they were the unanimous. And awesome. we took our two-year hiatus, and fortunately, they were able to come back. <laughs> yeah. So we were nice. really excited to bring them back this I, time. I'm really interested to see because um, this is a lot of this is um, because it's Minnesota bands. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting about this is that you can come here, you can hear them and see them, and then 
it's one of those things where you go, well, I'm going to go find them where they're playing next. Oh, right. absolutely. So it's not just a river song thing. You get a nice introduction to them here. Um, you get to hear them in a, in a really cool environment. I think the other thing too, about like the grounds you were talking about with the stage and being able to go back and forth and that kind of stuff. It isn't like you're, you know, competing against 7,000 people to get close to the stage. Um, you know, one of the things I like about this one is that you get a chance to meet the artists afterwards. Yeah. Um, and that isn't really um, typical at a no, lot of No, it's intimate where when you're sitting there, it feels like they're singing to you. But like you said, there's not a hundred people kind of just everywhere around you, which is a fun experience too. But this is just so much more laid back. There's free parking. You know, you can yeah. just like get out of your car and you don't have to walk miles and miles. There's free bike check. You can bring your bike to River Song and mm -hmm. just, you know, kind of go that route. So it's just definitely easier to access and just more laid back. Like you said, you can grab a picnic table. It's not like you have to get there at six o'clock in the morning to grab a picnic table. We just set up picnic tables every year because yeah. they're further back and you, it's kind of the rowdier section. You'll find me in the rowdier <laughs> section. Not sitting down though. Well, no, I, I was going to say that uh, over the years I've seen people get up and dance and there's so there's room in front to do that too. And yeah. Um, yeah. I just know a lot of people that have been there for the first time. We see a lot of first timers every year, right? Yep, absolutely. Uh, and every time I talk to somebody, they're like, I, I wish I would have been here earlier. I wish I would have been coming since the start of this. Yeah. Thing. Because they just, they all of a sudden realize we've got this little gem here that people are just discovering, mm -hmm. which I think is neat. So how did, it, and maybe you can expand on this a little bit, but how did Riversong get it start? Why did it, why yeah. did it, you know? So the Blandon Foundation does the retreat. Were either of you Blandon? No. Okay. Um, so 2006, I believe, they did the retreat, and that's where the concept came into being. And then 2009, uh, Board of Volunteers basically started putting the festival together. So, well, before that, but 2009 is when it, you know, came to be. Um, and it obviously, you know, it's just evolved over the years. And so there have been, you know, tons of dedicated volunteers, like you were saying, on the board that just make this all happen. Because I think a lot of people would anticipate maybe one weekend for volunteering. You don't, you know... It's not a lot of volunteering, but it is a full year commitment. I mean, and everybody has their area. We have our hospitality people that are just, we call it radical hospitality because they go above and beyond to not only make sure that artists are comfortable, but the guests that make sure they have a great experience. Um, our site and security, to be honest, I can't even figure out what they do. It's just amazing. It's just all of that. <laughs> I help, I, but, <laughs> sound lifting. <laughs> Stage crew, you know, just just a lot goes into the logistics of figuring out the festival and just every one of our volunteers does an amazing job. We have one volunteer that just takes care of volunteers. It takes over 250 people to put on the festival. And one of the perks is if you volunteer, then you get in that day for free. So we have a lot of people that come and there is no spot where you volunteer other than maybe parking where you can't hear the music and you still can. So you're still there with like your comrades because people volunteer together. You know, we've got our fence security people that have done it every year for the last 12 years. And there's just all sorts of those opportunities um, within the festival. So if somebody wants to volunteer, how do they go about doing that? So you could go on the website and yep. there's a button just to click on for volunteers. Otherwise, Wendy, who is our new volunteer coordinator this year, is going to be at the farmer's market on June 25th from 8 to 12. So if you want to go down there and maybe just chat with her and say, hey, you know, what does this really entail? You know, maybe you want, maybe you want to be moving the whole entire time, or maybe yeah. you, you don't want to people. I don't know. You know, there's all different <laughs> sorts of ways to volunteer and get engaged um, that are just at the festival. Otherwise, we're always looking to grow our committees. So maybe you don't want to volunteer at the festival, but you'd still get in for free by volunteering with marketing, let's say, or you could help with hospitality, or you could help with volunteers, stage and crew. We often need people to help set up on Thursday. So mm -hmm. it's really sure. nice um, just to have those people. We're putting up tents and scrubbing picnic tables and putting out garbages. And then we need people to tear it out on Sunday. I don't know what happens that day. I've never made it. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yep. No. Good for you. So a lot of music festivals have camping and lodging. And we heard that campsites this year sold out within minutes yeah. of them going um, online back in April. Do you know how far the reach is for people attending Riversong? You know, we've had them. I know they've said all over the world, but I just feel that a lot of the people that come are people that maybe vacation in the area and have turned Hutchinson into maybe the vacation destination Absolutely. anyway. And they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to River Song too. Because we'll hear about all these people. And they're like, oh no, we came for River Song. I mean, we love the area. And with six festivals every weekend now from River Song to the fair, you know, there's tons of reasons to be here and to come into yeah. the community and just yep. take advantage of all the much and hutch. So yeah. yeah, I feel that it's just interesting. I sat down with a couple and they were kayakers 
and they would just find places to camp with music festivals where they could kayak. And they were from like, I can't remember. I think it was Arkansas, but they go somewhere different every summer. And I'm like, that's such a niche, like to find that. What a very specific (laughs) uh, vacation you're seeking out every year. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, one of the other things, and you, you mentioned volunteering. Now I heard that the, the volunteer slots for the beer tent are taken, oh, yeah. which is unfortunate, but we also have food trucks this year. Yes. Um, how many food trucks and do you know the variety of stuff that you're yeah, going to Yeah, there's a huge range. And so they've been doing a really great job on social media promoting them. But we have everything from gluten-free to deep fried goodness to specialty organic. You know, you can get slushies and you can get rip your floats. So basically, you know, for some of us that are there all weekend, we can eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner and not get bored. There's amazing food opportunities. Um, so plan on doing that. And like you said, the beer tent, plan on having beverages. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I like going. Well, we have a new There's winery a of- this year too. So Jomas Hill Vineyard okay. out of Darwin um, has sold some of their wine to us. So we're going to be featuring that Minnesota wine at the festival this year. They haven't opened their tasting room yet, but it'll be a good opportunity to taste what they're working on over there. Awesome. Very cool. So we, we talked about a little bit of this, which is pulling an event together like this takes a lot of work. What does it mean to you to volunteer at River Song? Hmm. I just, I volunteer to make the community that I want to live in. And I want to live in a community with a music festival. And that hasn't changed for me in any way over the last 14 years. You know, I mean, I have changed, but it's just something that makes the experience of being here better for so many people. And like you said, so many new people find this festival and just my small little part, it feels like my contribution to making that happen and being on the marketing and getting the word out. Cause it's something I get really excited to talk about. And I love to talk about the festival. So it's just a good fit for me. But you know, the other reason is the committee is just fun. We have a really fun group of volunteers and those meetings make me cry. They're, they're hilarious. Like everybody in that group is just a hoot and we have so much fun planning everything. You know, it's serious, but it's fun and it's just such a great time. And honestly, the passion of the founders, you know, you look at somebody like Betsy Price that has been there since day one, came up with this idea and she just, she Betsy, Betsy does. That's yeah. what, that's what you say when she gets you to volunteer for something. And so honestly, she has just been, you know, they're the entire way and there's so much support within just the group itself and helping each other and organizing things. And then just being there the weekend, you know, it's, it's so much more complex when you, you help with it, the layers of your involvement with it just enriches the experience. And so, yeah, I really just enjoy everything about it. Every band. As a community, how do we help Riversong grow? Honestly, you know, show up. Tell your yeah. friends, bring somebody, maybe plan something around it. My, one of my best friends is turning 40 this year and she's having her 40th birthday at River Song. So people are coming from all over the state. They're just coming here, which I was like, oh, thank you. Like, that's just yeah. amazing. But mm-hmm. there's so many ways that our community could hold their celebrations within the festival. We've had reunions there. We've had, um, you know, just people doing family events. They're like, oh, this is a great time to come to Hutch. You should come. That would be, you know, just awesome. Even that. Share our posts on Facebook. It doesn't even have to be you know, volunteering for something, but just get engaged with it and just tell people about how great it is if you've been there. And if you haven't, maybe try it out, see what it's like. Like I said, I think there's a lot of people that go to the event for the first time. Every year I run into somebody that like, this is our first time here. I've lived in Hutchinson for, you know, mm-hmm. since 2008 and this, this event started in 2009 and I, this is the first time I've ever been there and they won't miss it now going forward. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where I think if you just go and give it a shot and see what it is, I think you'll sit down and go, that was actually pretty cool. You know, someone said at, at the meeting we were at the other morning, um, because someone came in to talk to the group about River Song and volunteering at River Song. And, and like you mentioned, Val, there's a lot of festivals. There's a lot of things to do in Hutchinson. Um, and, but River Song feels different. And when I have been there, this is going to sound weird, I don't feel like I'm in my hometown. I feel yeah. like I have gone somewhere as yeah. a destination to do something that I enjoy, but I'm right here in my own town, which makes it so, yeah. so much easier and more accessible for me. But you just, you the music, the outdoors, the river, you just kind of get taken away by yeah. all of it. And it's, it's magical. It is magical. It's a little magical though. Then. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice location too, right along the river. And I know that we... Um, you know, we make sure that the city has sprayed for mosquitoes through there. So we're not yep, worried absolutely. about mosquitoes or anything like that. I've never had a problem with that when I've been down there. No, and it's beautiful. The city does an amazing job taking care of all of our parks. So just oh, we going have the down best there. parks. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's just, 
and the art down there and just everything. Mm-hmm. The people tootling by on their kayaks yeah. and boats, like you were saying with the pontoons and bikers. And yeah. So do you swim out to them and then, yep. and then try to get ticket fees? Yep. I, bring I mean, them. nobody should get this for free. Yeah. Dang it. Nope. You know what? This is a new angle. So we have a new subcommittee. <laughs> the sub swim committee. Just River engagement. So you, should, you might be able to walk out there too. I'm not sure. True. But, well, the water's you know, a little higher this year. Yeah. There's a lot of carp though. That's true. You might, might nibble at your toes when you're out there. So, um, when is River Song? How can people get tickets? Yeah, kind of so July stuff? 15th and 16th. It's a Friday and Saturday. You can go Friday. You can go Saturday. You can go both days. Friday night's $30. Saturday's $40. Everything's online. Or if maybe, hey, your plans fall through, buy your tickets at the gate. You can, mm-hmm. you have options. If you're kind of a last minute person and you don't want to commit to it right now, no worries. If you're from out of town, I heard there's still lodging available. So there still are options for hotels. Nice. Um, and there is overflow camping. So it's not the most ideal camping. It's not like the rest of our gorgeous camping with the shade and the fire pits. But you could just throw up a tent. I don't know. There's a lot of spontaneous people. I'm going to go to the music festival and pitch my tent. <laughs> right. I, I love the fact that the, the campground sold out right away. Yeah. I love that too. Immediately. RV sites, people are planning their vacations around it. So a lot of those RVers, a lot of them are from town and mm-hmm. they want to have a real nice time and sleep in their RV that night, which I think is yep. genius. Yeah. So that's, that's what I used to do when I had a, had a little tow behind trailer. I guess it wasn't so little, but um, that was one of the things I wanted to do right away. Get in, get set up, um, get a spot. And then I could just walk back and forth. If I need to go cool off, I could. Yep. Um, it was just an icy thing. And of course the grounds are completely shaded over there. So there's, you know, even if it's 95 degrees outside, you're still going to have some shade and yeah. And you're just that. sitting, you know, we've had some years that have been scorchers mm-hmm. just yep. sitting there, go get a lemonade. Beautiful Going, trees for shade. Yeah, it's sit just, in the sun if you like that. Yeah, you sit in the shade if that's better. <laughs> yeah. I sometimes shoot for the sun until everyone who walks past me is like, "Hey, redhead, yeah. maybe find yourself some shade." <laughs> but I love the sun. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens most definitely. So, well, that's awesome. I, Valerie, I appreciate you coming in and talking about uh, yeah. you know River Song. Uh, we're looking forward to being there. Um, I've already gotten some people saying, well, you don't have your tickets yet, Roman. We haven't seen you go through. Well, I'm getting them. Just yeah. <laughs> Valerie just said we can get them at the yeah, door. Yeah, Anybody who knows me knows that They're I will good. be looking in my pockets for my credit card or cash on the way down there. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> well, if you could see the sparkle in her eye when she talks about River Song, you should I mean you should come just because of that. <laughs> just, just because of that. All right. You can also check us out on uh, uh, YouTube. Thank you for joining us, of course, but you can check us out on YouTube. You can check us out on Spotify, uh, all of the streaming services like Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music is now carrying us, and iHeartRadio. If you guys have any ideas of a topic that we need to cover or something that we should be looking into, you can always reach out to us on our Facebook page, Hometown Conversations. Thanks, everybody, for listening or watching. Until next time, have a great week.